Welcome to another edition of Eric's Product Reviews. I am Eric and today I am super excited to talk to you about the brand new remote control from Sofa Baton. Now I reviewed the Sofa Baton U1 remote control a long time ago. Uh, I loved it. It's still to this day one of my favorite remote controls. Um, but Sofa Baton has now come out with the Sofa Baton X1, which is what I'm holding in my hand. This is just part of the package. And uh, basically they took everything from the U1 and then added uh, functionality, improved it, made it a really, really excellent, excellent remote. Uh, it comes not only with the remote control, which is what you hold in your hand, obviously, to change channels and stuff, but it comes with a hub, uh, which also serves as an IR blaster. So that's also in the box. That's the brains of the operation and the IR blaster. Also comes with uh, two additional IR blaster uh, long cords that you can attach to the hub and run to different places so that you can make sure the IR signal is being sent everywhere it needs to be sent. Uh, and it includes two charging cords because you need to, or a, a charging cord and a power cord, power cord for the uh, hub because it needs to obviously be continually connected to power and then a charging cord uh, for the remote because the remote has a, is built, uh, has a rechargeable battery built in. Um, anyway, I love this remote. Uh, it's really, really cool. Uh, it has a cool digital display and works really well. I'm going to just go through everything as quickly as I can, but I want to make sure you get all the information you need about this remote. Uh, not only do I think this is now the best remote control on the market, but it is most definitely the best replacement remote for the Logitech Harmony, since Logitech isn't making those anymore. Uh, if you're used to those or looking for something like those, this remote is the perfect replacement. So let's talk about, uh, I already told you what comes in the box. Let's talk about the firmware update. When you get this remote, the first thing you want to do is the firmware update. It's very important. Uh, this is a brand new product. And of course, like any brand new product, they had a few glitches and things they needed to work out in the firmware. All those have been worked out, but you have to make sure you update the firmware. Uh, first, get the latest app. Make sure you have the newest app before you do anything. Then connect to the hub. Uh, it probably will tell you right away, hey, there's a firmware update for the hub. So you will do that. After you do the firmware update for the hub, then and it's done, then you need to power off the hub. You need to uh, close the app, completely close the app, and uh, let, it the, uh, let it sit for five minutes. Plug the hub back in, let it power on, uh, wait about another five minutes so that it can get connected uh, and everything. Then after that, uh, you can go back into the app. Then you need to click the me button and uh, look for firmware update for the remote. And then it'll find the firmware update for the remote and update the firmware for the remote, which is very, very important. You got to do uh, all three of those steps. So newest app, firmware update for the hub, firmware update for the remote. The hub updates fairly quickly. That update only took a, a few minutes. Um, the update for the remote takes longer. It took like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. So make sure uh, you're just patient, let it do its thing. Once that all is done, then you have the uh, most advanced, the most amazing remote control uh, you can find. Uh, you go in to, to set it up. First, you're going to add all your devices. So you go into the app, you enter the uh, brand, and you enter the, the model. And a lot of times, the remote commands are going to be in there already. Uh, so it'll look, it'll find them, and it gives you a chance to test and make sure the set of commands that it has are correct. And that's great. Um, but what's also cool is if they aren't, or if even if, if just one of them isn't, but especially if you have some weird device that they don't have commands for, you, but you have an old remote, then you it is learning. You can teach uh, the X1 any of those commands. A good example is Apple TV. They do have built-in Apple TV uh, commands, but I didn't want to use the Bluetooth version. I wanted to use the IR version. Uh, and also, I, I had an, a previous remote I was using, and I wanted to make sure I could use all those commands, which aren't ones that a lot of default remotes for Apple TV have. So I just used the learning method. I used the learning method and was able to teach all the commands to the, uh, uh, the remote I built. So you have both options. You can uh, teach commands from an old remote or for most products, uh, like for my TV and my Blu-ray player and my receiver, all that stuff, I it just use the built-in commands, all worked great. So. Uh, you have both options. Once you've got all those commands in there, though, you can go in and test them one by one, and if just one of them isn't working, then you can repair it. You can learn just that one, which is great. You can also uh, use that as a trick. 
uh, for any existing remote to make something on that remote, like the remote for your TV, but you want one of the buttons to control a different device, just make it a learning or click add and then add a new one. Anything you want. Once you've got all those activities in there, you can assign any of the activities uh, or any of the uh, remote control uh, commands to any of these buttons, fully uh, programmable any way you want it to be, which is awesome. That's just one aspect of this because this has control of devices individually, but it also has activities, which is very similar. If you use the Logitech Harmony before, you'll know that, uh, you'll be familiar with that method. Once you've got all your devices in, then you start setting up activities. When you set up those activities, you can bind devices into an activity. For example, if I'm gonna watch Apple TV, well, I'm gonna use my Apple TV box for the streaming, but I need to turn on the TV, and I need to turn on the receiver and turn the receiver to the right input. And then once I'm uh, watching, I want most of these controls to control the Apple TV box, but I want the volume stuff to control the receiver. All that happens automatically. It's so simple and easy to, to set it up. It does take time to get all this set up, but once you get it set up, then you never really have to worry about it again. Uh, and it, the activities work great. You, uh, you choose an activity, it turns all the right stuff on. If you switch to a different activity, it knows what was just on, so it, doesn't turn it off, it just switches inputs if it needs to. Once you press the off button, then it uh, turns everything off. So uh, works really great. You can also use uh, the app itself, has a, like a digital remote inside the app, and you can use that uh, if you don't wanna use this, and it sometimes has more buttons. Personally, I like physical remotes better than using my phone. But that's because whenever you use this or the phone, it's just sending the command to that hub, and then the hub is the one that's actually sending the IR blast command or the Bluetooth command to the device. Um, so yeah, it works really well. Um, okay, so that's how it all works. I wanna jump over really quick to a demo. Uh, so you can see that's how you set everything up. Oh, I forgot, this is important, is uh, once you get activities set up, you can add uh, special buttons, commands, or macros uh, to the activity. And then those are accessible in the remote. If you uh, select a device, uh, if you select a device on this, uh, not only do these buttons control that device, but then you, you press this button and you'll have a list of every command, every uh, signal command available for that device. Same thing with activities. Uh, once you create activities, you can add certain specific commands to be listed underneath there to scroll to and choose, or you can create macros that do lots, uh, several different activities uh, and things. So very, very cool that you have that option as well. I want to make sure I cover that because that's, it's just the, the programmability of this remote is awesome. Uh, and that's what makes it so cool. All right, let's get over to the demo so you can just see a quick demo of me using this uh, with my setup. So you can see once you get all your devices set up, I have them all here on my activities page and uh, I've got them all set up. I've gone in and edited them, added the things I wanted to add, added the special uh, learning features I wanted to add that if they weren't built in, so I have all those and that's devices. Now I go to activities and in activities, this is where you group things together. So watch TV, that's what we do the most, and that's basically watching uh, stuff on our Apple TV box. So in this activity, um, you, you just tell it what devices you wanna use, which for us, it's the Apple TV box, the receiver, and the TV, and then uh, you decide what uh, buttons on the remote to assign to control which device, and uh, it sets it all up for you. So I'm just gonna demo uh, using the remote now that I have that all set up uh, with my TV so you can kind of see how that works. So you can see just like on the app I have activities devices now set uh, whenever you make a change on the app it'll sync automatically or you can click sync in order to uh, do that. This is the go back button for the remote specifically that goes back to the previous screen so I can control uh, things using, dev using devices or using activities. We'll show you activities first. So these are the activities I have there. So if I click the uh, watch TV, then the remote knows that my TV, my receiver, and the Apple TV are all involved in that. So it turns on the receiver and it turns on the TV. Um, it doesn't turn on Apple TV because Apple TV doesn't need to be turned on. You just need to click the home button or whatever button to control it. So I'm gonna click that home button uh, in order to go to the home screen of Apple TV, and then that'll show up on my TV. 
and uh, I'll click it again to go out of it or go to the, the actual home 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 and you can see I'm fully controlling it because I've assigned within that activity that all these keys relate to Apple TV except for the volume keys relate to the DIN and receiver and so that's what you do when you set it up in activities you say which keys you want to operate the functions on uh, on the devices which device that's part of this activity so um, I click home screen and I can I can move around but if I click volume then it turns up the volume you can't really see that maybe you can see that in the background but it's turning up the volume of my receiver by me clicking that volume button because that's what I told it to do now if you want to turn all this stuff off uh, you just click the off button there and that turns everything off now if you're in one activity so I'm on watch TV activity which is watching Apple TV right now and you want to switch to another one the remote knows that all the uh, that all these things are already on so if I now switch to uh, LG TV in uh, and basically that allows you to watch uh, at, like a, off a USB stick on the TV as it focuses there um, it goes immediately to that and you could you know I can uh, use the uh, keys to switch over to different input uh, and the receiver switch to TV audio, which is a different audio receiver. Now, if I want to switch back to watch TV, I switch back for Apple TV, I switch back to that, and that's going to switch back to that. But oh, wait, I forgot to uh, change the uh, select the input to make that go away. Not a big deal. I can just go back and drop down to devices, choose LG TV, and now that I'm on LG TV, if you see that, so I went, show you what I did. I went back uh, to the main screen, chose devices, and then chose LG TV, and now I'm controlling LG TV. So now that I'm controlling LG TV, I can uh, click the OK button to select that input and make that go away. So even though I'm using the Watch Apple TV activity, I can still always go back to my main screen to pick, pick a specific uh, device um, and then go back to the activity when I'm done with that. And now that I'm back on the activity and the green is selected, now this is controlling uh, the uh, Apple TV. So uh, very cool how you can switch between activities really easily. Um, you can turn uh, everything off by clicking the off button, um, but then you can also uh, control stuff just using a device. So one more thing real quick I want to show you. We're going to go back to devices and go to devices and then go to my Apple TV. Now I call this my Apple TV because I created this remote. I used learning signals from an existing remote for all of these and um, I did that so that even though this is just my Apple TV remote um, I can still use the volume buttons because I, I taught these buttons. I, I programmed these buttons and used the learning feature and just used the volume up and volume down from my, my Denon remote to train these so that even when they're on Apple TV, they control the volume level on my receiver. Uh, so you can do that. You can set up a remote, but then you can go in and customize by using the repair feature, customize uh, a button even within the remote. So this isn't an activity. It's kind of replicating what you do with activities. It's a little bit redundant, but the thing is, no matter what I device I'm on, I always want my volume buttons to control the Denon. So I did that on every one of these individual devices. I manually uh, did the learning feature to teach the volume buttons the uh, Denon receiver volume, because that's what I always want them to control. Um, you don't have to do that, because if you use activities, then activities kind of does that for you. Uh, and that's the whole point of activities because you choose uh, watch TV which is Apple TV dinner and receiver and LG TV and it automatically it lets you select to control your dinner and receiver but just know that that is an option and as you can see uh, it works great just easy way to control your TV um, either using activities or using the individual device remotes so you can see it works great activities work great controlling a device works great 
Uh, it's really easy. Uh, once you've got everything set up, you can always reorder things. You can reorder the commands for remote and the list up here. You can reorder your devices. You can reorder your activities. You can set everything up exactly the way that works best for you. So like I said, it might take you a little bit of time, uh, a couple of weeks after you've had it, you might tweak stuff to get it right. Once you've got it set up though, uh, this is gonna be your best friend. This is gonna be the best remote you've ever had um, because you can use it exactly, the, you can have it set up to be used exactly the way that works best for you. Uh, and you can have it as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. And uh, yeah, that's just uh, what makes this remote uh, the X1 uh, Sofa Baton X1, uh, definitely to me the best smart remote you could possibly have for all of your devices. And uh, yeah, definitely a product that I recommend. Well, that's going to be it for this review. If you like this review, please click that like button. I will have a link in the description below to this product on Amazon, so you can jump over there and check it out. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as I can. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel or favorite this playlist so you can keep up with future product reviews. And uh, that's going to be it until next time. So be safe and be happy.